Judges chapter 12. And the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together and went northward and said unto Japheth, Wherefore passest thou over the fight against the children of Ammon, and didst not call us to go with thee? Now let's go over to Judges chapter 8, verse 1. Judges 8, verse 1. And this is Gideon, when he comes back from the war. And Judges 8, 1. And the men of Ephraim said unto him, Why hast thou served us thus, that thou callest us not, when thou wentest to fight with the Midianites? And they did chide with him sharply. So, <laughs> this is an Ephraim problem throughout the Bible. Ephraim steps in and said, you know, you didn't call us. What's going on? Back to chapter 12. And the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together, went northward, and said to Jetheth, Wherefore passest thou over the fight against the children of Naaman, and didst not call us to go with thee? We will burn thy house upon thee with fire. Now what just happened to Japheth? He just burned his daughter. Now here comes this jealousy. Here comes this tribe and saying, hey, what gives you the right? Why didn't you? So let's see what he says. Almost like with Gideon. And Japheth said to him, I and my people were at great strife with the children of Naaman. And when I called you, you delivered me not out of thy hand, their hands. Now Gideon said, hey, I called you. You took care of these two kings, Zeb and Obed or whatever. <laughs> All right, yeah. But, you know, you took care of two kings. I took care of a whole army, Gideon. Here... According to Japheth, he says, I, I called you, but you didn't show up. Verse 3, when I saw that ye delivered me not, when you didn't come and help, you didn't answer. I put my life in my hands and passed over against the children of Ammon, and the Lord delivered them into my hand. Look how he gives God the credit. Wherefore? Then are you come up unto me this day to fight against me? Now, Japheth, if you remember from chapter 11, knows the history of Israel. And he knows, not chapters, but a couple chapters ago, they pulled the same thing with Gideon. He's not a happy man. The events, the current events that happened to Japheth, and then these guys come up and start threatening to kill his house. Then Japheth, at the moment here, gathered together all the men of Gilead and fought with Ephraim. Now, do you see what the condition of Israel is? It is civil war. It is brother versus brother. It is tribe versus tribe. It is tribe coming up. Why didn't you do this for us? Why didn't you do that for us? It is just chaos and just. And so... When we come over to Judges chapter 21, verse 25, the conclusion of the book of Judges, Judges 21, 25, will account Judges 1, 1 to Judges 21, 25. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. That's the answer of Japheth with his daughter. It looked right to me. Ephraim. It looked right. To, it's been working. It worked with Gideon. And, J, and Japheth's response is he gathered together all the men of Gilead and fought with Ephraim. I'm not taking it. And there was a battle. Civil war. And the men of Gilead smote Ephraim because, here's the reason, they said the Gileites, the people of Gilead, are fugitives from Ephraim, among the Ephraimites, and among the Manasseh. You guys left us as a clan. You left us as a family. Is that a reason to have a battle? Is that? A, but what was your problem in chapter 8, Ephraim? What was your problem? And the Gileites took the passages of Jordan before Ephraimites. And it was so that when those Ephraimites which were escaped said, 
All right, the ones that got away that were not killed in battle. Let me go over. They come to the Jordan River. We want to cross. That the men of Gilead said unto them, Art thou an Ephraimite? Are you the enemy? And he said, Nay. Okay. And this is something that happened in World War I and happened in World War II. They would give a password. A password that supposedly that only Americans were to know. Problem was, it didn't work because the enemy knew the answers. You know, who was a famous slugger in the New York Yankees ball team? Or what comic strip, you know, and all those kind of things there. But the enemy knew the answer. But the Bible way is, then said they unto him, say, Shabuoth, which I can't say. And the Ephraimite would say, Sabuoth. For he could not frame to pronounce it right. So here, like even in the States of America, you have a different dialect. You have a different way of saying words. And, and possible in America, you take the word car. The way you say the word car will describe where you come from in America. New Englanders have a way of saying it. Southerners have another way. Californians have their own specific language. Something wrong with the water out there. So here is a word that Ephraimites could not say. They would say it wrong, and this became the password. And the word simply means a stream or flood. Sabuath means that stream or flood where they're at. And they would say, and you can even see the spelling is completely different. There's no sh. And there's no double, I mean, there's no sh. So evidently, the Ephraimites had a problem with saying sh. For he could not frame to pronounce it right. And at that point, then they took him and slew him at the passage of Jordan. And there fell at that time of the Ephraimites, 40 and 2,000. Now, according to Japheth, he said he did call them and they didn't come. And as a result, 42,000 Ephraimites are killed. And Japheth judged Israel six years. Then died Japheth to Gilead and buried in one of the cities of Gilead and we're not even told where. And after him, Ibzan of Bethlehem judged Israel. And weird remarks in the book of Judges. He had 30 sons and 30 daughters whom he sent abroad and took 30 daughters from abroad for his sons. And he judged Israel seven years. So he has 60 children. He sends his daughters out and gets 30 other females for his sons. Interesting. And he judged Israel seven years. Then died Ibzan, and he was buried in Bethlehem. After him, Elon, Eloin, a Zebulonite, judged Israel. And he judged Israel ten years. And Eli the Zebunite died and was buried in Ajalon in the country of Zebulun. After him, Abandon, 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 I can't even say it right. The son of Halio, a Parthenite, judged Israel. And he had 40 sons and 30 nephews that rode on three score and ten ass colts. There's something in Judges about the ass colt. And he judged Israel eight years. We're coming up to the first king of Israel, and he's going to be an ass turner. He's going to take care of asses. But the first king that's approved by God is the sheep herder. David fought for his sheep. Saul lost his sheep. And he judged Israel eight years. And Abaddon, the son of Heli, the Parathonite, died and was buried in Parthon, in the land of Ephraim. Well, there's Ephraim again. In the Mount of the Amalekites. Those are the enemies of God. Now, Joshua, let's see more about this Ephraimite. Let me look here real quick. 
Uh, Joshua chapter. Oh, that's not it. These Ephraimites, nice. they are just. Chapter 17 and verse 14. They are gripers and complainers. And they're of Joseph. 17:14, Joshua, and the children of Joseph spake unto Joseph, saying, Why hast thou given me but one lot and one portion inherit? See, I am a great people. For as much as I as much as the Lord has blessed me hitherto. See the same attitude with Gideon and with Japheth. And Joshua answered the people, if you be great people, then get thee into the wood country. And and the children, verse 16 of Joseph, the hill is not enough for us. They come and speak up and they're very prone to open up their mouth and complain to the leadership. The leadership of Joshua, the leadership of Gideon, the leadership of, uh, uh, oh, wow, Japheth. Joshua says, well, just go, uses sarcasm. G uh, Gideon uses sarcasm. Japheth kicks, kicks their butt. By the time you get to Japheth, man, they're, they're just, it's how amazing that, a trait of a family just keeps going on. And I just wanted you to see that trait of Ephraim. 